I'm Dr. David Heber. I'm professor of medicine and director of the UCLA Center for Human Nutrition. Uh, my career has been about obesity treatment and prevention as well as nu nutrition and cancer prevention and treatment. I directed a uh, uh, National Institutes of Health Center on Nutrition and Cancer for over 20 years. Uh, and in that center studied both obesity and a number of different types of cancer. Since about 1993, we've been studying nutrition and prostate cancer and published extensively on this topic. We are beginning to learn more about why we should not treat men who have been diagnosed with early stage disease. Can you tell us your thoughts about diet, active surveillance, and other protocols? Well, I think we are really uh, finding out now that a large number of the prostate cancers that are being diagnosed are what are called indolent disease. That is, they're very slow-growing disease. And there are many men now who elect uh, to undergo what's called expectant management or active surveillance, where they undergo a prostate biopsy every six months and have the uh, Gleason score looked at repeatedly. So if the Gleason is 3 plus 3, currently in Southern California, about half of men with a Gleason score of 3 plus 3 are electing active surveillance, especially if they're younger men or on the other end of the spectrum, uh, much older men, uh, where the, their life expectancy uh, would be uh, less than what would be benefited from the therapy of their prostate cancer. I think where this field has to go, though, in the future is going to be to identify on a molecular genetic basis which tumors are really going to hurt you and which ones are, are just going to be there. Uh, what is the role of diet? Well, diet is kind of an independent line because diet benefits you, I believe, uh, no matter what type of prostate prostate cancer you have, and even if you have a prostate cancer that you feel is not going to bother you, you may also have a risk for heart disease, diabetes, low back pain or knee pain. I was reclassified as a physical medicine doctor one year by the insurance company because 58% of my patients had low back pain. So if you're carrying around an extra 20 or 30 pounds, you're not eating correctly, you're not eating a colorful diet full of fruits and vegetables, soy protein, low fat meat products, you need to change your diet for lots of reasons. Uh, even if you get beyond all those other diseases, there's even a connection with Alzheimer's disease today and poor diets. So if you want to remember where your car keys are, eat a healthy diet. For patients who have progressive disease and are on hormone treatment, are there dietary things they can do that are more specific to their stage in the disease? Well, all men, as they age, lose muscle and gain fat. And if you don't exercise and lift weights as you age, you're going to get more abdominal fat, which is an inflammatory tissue. For men who undergo androgen blockade, this situation is even worse. They lose muscle because of the androgen blockade and the reduction in male hormones, increase their body fat. And we now found that there is an increased risk of cardiovascular disease and diabetes in that population of androgen blockade treated men, which may impact their survival more than prostate cancer. So that doesn't mean you shouldn't get prostate cancer treatment. It means that you, once you get the prostate cancer treatment, also address your over fatness, your low levels of muscle. And I believe from personal experience with my patients, it's possible to build muscle, even on androgen blockade. It's possible to lose fat by eating a healthy diet and exercising. We know there is an association between environmental issues, lifestyle, and risk of prostate cancer. What things can younger men do before they're even at risk for prostate cancer to help avoid this disease? Well, you know, it's interesting. There are differences around the world in different countries based on different dietary patterns in terms of the incidence of prostate cancer. However, when people migrate from a high incidence country to a low incidence country or vice versa from a low incidence country to a high incidence, their risk of cancer changes within 10 to 15 years. So while you would like to have started your dietary changes very early in childhood, uh, this probably will not, will not happen. There are so many impacts on the prostate gland that I don't think we'll ever get rid of prostate cancer completely. As a matter of fact, with aging, 90% uh, of men of age 90 will have prostate cancer. But if you were to die in a car accident, even at age 50, many of your endocrine organs in your body, your adrenal glands and other endocrine glands would have localized tumors in them. And in Japan 20 years ago, the number of localized tumors was the same as the number of localized tumors in America. The number of clinically active ones in America was much greater, the faster growing ones. Today in Japan, that's unfortunately changed as the incidence of obesity has gone up fourfold. And we studied a few years ago, uh, 
cancers from Japan and cancers from the United States and Japanese Americans, and they were pretty much the same, although there were some slight differences. So we think that the prostate cancer today of a Western diet in Asia ends up with the same cancer we have here. So it would be wonderful if we could get rid of aging, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think the answer for prostate cancer is to identify those cancers that are going to hurt you and those that are going to stay localized. And once we do that, we'll be able to focus on that subgroup. So we know 300,000 men are diagnosed with prostate cancer, 30,000 die. So that's 10%. How can we identify that 10%? Is there anything new you're working on now that is particularly exciting? Well, we're working a lot on pomegranate juice and pomegranate extracts right now. And you know, pomegranate was on, on the crest of the Royal College of Physicians in England and was on the millennium issue of the British Medical Journal because there's more medical lore about the pomegranate than almost any other uh, food. And we found that the pomegranate inhibits inflammation in the prostate uh, gland, that it also uh, in, it inhibits prostate cancer growth in animals, both in early prostate cancer and advanced prostate cancer. And in humans, we were able to reduce the rate of rise of PS in men with prostate cancer. And there's some large trials now confirming that early trial, which hopefully will be completed within the next year. So I think that that's a very interesting area. And we're also working on things to modulate the immune system because we believe inflammation uh, is a key part of prostate cancer. And just as with the pomegranate inhibiting this, we're looking at many other things, such as losing weight, increasing fish oils, increasing other fruits and vegetables in the diet that will modulate inflammation and reduce the growth rate of prostate cancer.